about today. <clears throat> but how to feel good about yourself. How's that? How to feel good about yourself. That's a little hard because uh, you're <coughs> up and down, one day good, and then uh say Basra and Asra and one day the sum and one day not nice. And um what was Shukhan Arach? <laughs> How do you feel good about yourself? <clears throat> well, the Almighty, He created the world, and there's a thing called instant and there's long term. It says here, in the Shulchan Aruch in the beginning, <laughs> that the person who gets up in the morning, he knows Hashem is in front of him, and he feels that Hashem is there, Molech Kvodo, and uh, he sees your deeds, and at that point you get up in the morning, and uh, this elevates you that where you are, who you are at this time. But when you get up in the morning, when you get up, hello, hello, when you get up in the morning, so you, you get right away, excitement, new day, new time, but uh, you're now standing in front of Hashem, Hashem sees you, and now you're going forward. There's another time you get Kedusha is on Shabbos. Shabbos is once a week. A share could uh, become Shabbos, Shabbos Kodesh, and you feel elevation. You're connected to spirituality, to holiness, and, and you get elevated. Shabbos elevates you. <clears throat> Even if you you don't do too much, you don't sing, etc., but still you get elevated. When you do mitzvahs, it's also elevation. A share kid is shown. So every time you do a mitzvah, you get a little elevation. You feel good. Like a woman gets dressed and looks nice, she feels good. <clears throat> Doing mitzvahs, have an effect upon your soul to make your soul get connected to Kedusha. And that's cool. <coughs> uh, I'm going to explain that a little bit before we explain that a little bit. So you have periods of time where you hook into Kedusha and uh, you grow from it. And you get strength. And from those moments, you you try to look back and feel good about those moments, and that gives you a propensity to go on a little further. I want to tell you over here a little story in the Chofetz Chaim that brings it down. Everybody heard the book called All for the Boys. Where did he get the idea? All for the boys. You heard about the book? All for the boys. The name of a book. So I want to read you where I think he got it from. It says in Kedoshim, we are commanded and warned to become holy. We have to do many things to make ourselves holy. We try to explain it. But the Malachim, they were born holy. And therefore there's no need for them to become holy. Okay? He tells of a story of a person who uh, who wanted to become like the neighbors, so he went to the to the comer of the place, and he uh, he told them he's sprinkling all the water. He said, "Listen, here's a statement, a paper that you're now uh, like every, like a goy now, and uh, you have the right to marry in our country and the places where the Jews are not allowed." So then, uh, and this was known by everybody. Everybody in the community stayed away from him, and he wasn't uh, he could marry a Jewish girl. They wouldn't marry him. They wouldn't let him sell a house to the guy. And do things with him. He said, "What's this all for?" 
Mr. the Comer. So if it also the same thing, when the Torah says that a person doesn't keep the Shabbos, he's like uh, he lost his position in holiness. So it also should have the same value. <coughs> Anyway, the person has to try to do his deeds for Shem Shemayim. Now, let's see. Depends on what you what you are doing. Is the Chavos Chaim brings down that if you deal with a little store, so you deal with a little money. If you deal with a big store, you deal with a lot of money. Or if you deal with uh, stocks, bonds, you have a chance to earn a lot of money. And uh, let's say you're dealing with the government, and the government has on its uh, packages government. But the government doesn't pay taxes, <coughs> except in Israel. <coughs> but most governments don't pay them. <coughs> let's say you're a merchant, and you put on your merchandise a sign that it's government, government products. So you free yourself from the taxes. <coughs> he says, ah, I hope it's not for them, right? Everything you do, you should say, my silamelech, my deeds are to the king. I do this for the king, do this for the king. <coughs> and therefore, <coughs> in other words, your deeds, what you're doing, you're thinking how you're going to do it for the king. Let's say you're, you're working for the president or somebody, so you're proud, so you're working for the king. So say for the word king doesn't sound so good today. So it's they have the book of all for the boys. So what you're doing is basically the shame shame my impression. And this should build up yourself to feel good about yourself. When you have a goal, you work in Hashem. Who do you work for? What are you doing? So uh, if you're a ah, housewife, I'm doing this. At least you know what you're doing is. That you're, 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 you're part of the king's uh, group and you're, you're part of the Jewish people God loves you and you're his children therefore and you're working when you do these things you're bringing dignity to the king and helping the king the king is the boss and land and controls so this by definition should uh, make you feel about I don't know, like everybody's here down. Let me tell you a story. If you know what's up here, everybody is down. I'll tell you a nice story. <laughs> I'll tell you an interesting story. You ready? Yeah. Let's see, let me tell you a little story. A woman, a woman uh, sends a letter to the rabbi and tells the rabbi, listen, she was a rich woman, not to the rabbi, but she was a tough lady. So she says, so she sent us a servant to the rabbi and asked if she has to do on Pesach Haseba. That, no, on Pesach, you're supposed to feel if you're very poor. The Mishnah says you're supposed to, uh, uh, like in those days, they had these couches like they had in Persia where you lay down and relax while you eat. Then you have to feel you're free, you know, a slave. You act like a rich person. So the Lord, being everybody, even a poor person who drinks the four cups of wine, has to sit down like a free person, Haseba. And that's men. What about a woman? So they say, you think she's an Isha Hashuva, if she is a, uh, a woman of value. So then she also can sit in a free way with Haseba lying down. But if she's not Isha Hashuva, then she doesn't. Or she's so much on her husband that doesn't. So she writes, she writes a letter. She sends a servant to see the... the uh, <coughs> The uh, rabbi said that maybe uh, should, should she, since she's a dignified woman, does she have to uh, do haseba? She want to hear from the rabbi. So the rabbi answers back. He said, "If you're going to eat matzahs <coughs> and you're drinking wine, so then uh, there's a there's a law called haseba. But if you're if you are bitter and, and you're like moror, you're like uh, you're like." Uh, uh, bitter herbs, so bitter herbs don't need to say. So bitter herbs don't need to say. No, since the woman's a bitter woman and a hard woman, so uh, hardness doesn't need to say. doesn't need uh, rest. 
to be free. Uh, and what do you need is, uh, I guess he doesn't you know, like that. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't get that. You didn't get it, okay. Yeah, let, let's tell you the difference. I didn't get it. Uh, no, the, the joke was in Hebrew, it's interesting, it didn't come out so well. In Hebrew, it comes out that the, uh, that the, the, the per woman is a bitter woman. So if you're, since, you're a, since you're like Moror, so then uh, you don't need her say, you don't need some good of you. Let me tell you a different story. What? I say, but Yoshni Malak, he say, the other. What's it? Glamorla. What? When you're free and you feel good, so it's not saying, but you don't know. You have to feel free. You have free. to feel free. Happy, free. A bitter woman is not. A bitter woman is not. Let's talk about this week's set a little bit. The word the Nesim. The Nesim was the. Uh, the Nesim was the uh, appointed people in the Jewish community from the tribes, and they had to build a base on the Gush. I mean, not the Mishkan, I had to build the, uh, the, the Mishkan, but really the Mishkan is part of the basin. There's one law to build a house for me. So in the desert they had the Mishkan, and later on they had the, uh, the basin, like the Rishon, Mishkan, Mishkan. And actually the measurements are all the same except the, the proportion, but the size can be different. Like the basin of Shane is bigger than the basin of Shushan, the basin of Shushan is bigger than the Mishkan, but the proportion of the size remain the same. But the actual uh, building could be could be different in measurement. That's why the second temple could have been better, bigger than the first and the first temple. Mishkan. Then, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the the Siam thought to themselves, since we're the big Talmud Chachamim, and we are the uh, great learned people, so therefore we should, because we do things the Shem Shemayim, we do things in a pure way. Therefore, it's fitting that we should give all the money and everything to build a uh, a Mishkan. Meaning, which is the Mishkan. Yeah. 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 We do things the shame Shammai, yeah? and then we will give everything because if it's, since it's such a holy thing as the Shechina. The God's crown that's coming to, to the Jewish people. So therefore, who should be the one that builds it? The Tami Chacham and the Nesim. And we're going to give all the money. And we're going to give them a pure way, in a holy way, in a very special way in order that it gets done. But Hashem said, He wants everybody to participate. Why? It could be because the, the, the fact that we have the Mishkan shows that the Almighty forgave us from the... Uh, from the sin of the uh, of the Aina, of his partial, that he's still with us, still loves us. So what happened? The Jewish people felt so jo joyous that they uh, want to be forgiven, or God will come back to them, close to them, that uh, everybody quickly came and brought all their jewelry, and the women took over all their jewelry quickly. And, um, and then uh, they got something from them. They had, and, and, and then Moshe had to say, die, enough. Well, I've got to tell you that I was in, uh, in Canada, and people, uh, when the Lubavitcher was alive, the women would be sending their jewelry and gold to the uh, Lubavitcher every day, I'll go to Mason Lincoln. Okay. No? Before, when he was alive. I know women, my sister used to, she used to go back and I used to bring back stacks of gold from all the women that did jewelry. <coughs> they give it to the, uh, to the voucher in case they don't build the base. I mean, they didn't want to be part of it. I don't know what's done with it. He's dead. I don't know what happened to that jewelry. But I know my sister used to bring when she used to come back from Toronto. Stacks of jewelry to be gold to give it to the Rebbe. Not to the Rebbe, but to the Rebbe. Because they, like they did before, they when they gave and not again. <coughs> anyway, so everybody gave, and uh, they had to say it's enough. But before that happened, 
after he announced that all the people will uh, give the will, are allowed to give so the the Nassim said hmm people aren't going to give all that money all these Thai people are going to give so we'll wait till the instead of them giving when everyone's allowed to give they should give everything but we'll wait till the end and there will be enough money for everybody and we'll we'll make the finishing touches and the rule is that the mitzvah goes to the one that finishes the mitzvah we learned from <coughs> From Moshe, Moshe took the bones of Yosef out of Egypt, and he didn't get the total mitzvah because the one that buried him brought from Egypt, from Moshe died in the desert. But the one that took the body from the desert to, to bury him, <coughs> he got the schar for the mitzvah. That's what the Moshe says. <coughs> See, the name, mitzvah is named after them. They figured that they'll be the ones that will um, finish the uh, the the. the uh, Mishkan, and the name will be on them, so they didn't have to give them the money. First they thought to give it all. And they said, well, I said, they'll give it the end, and the end will be the best. So what happened was that all the Jewish people gave, and they lost that, they didn't want to go. You know, they felt very bad, so Hashem gave them a position that they gave the the uh, the, the, the uh, precious stone that was on the breastplate of the cross. Mm-hmm. What do you see from this story, what? Right? What do we learn from that story? First of all, the generosity of all the Jews. Jews are always born again. What do we learn from this? For these what? For these reasons, even if you have good intentions. That's right. You have good intentions, you have these reasons. Otherwise, Hashem opens the mitzvah another way. If it has to be done, it'll open the mitzvah another way. And you have to do what's in front of you. Mm-hmm. Now, when they were told to build the base of Hamikdash. They were told, and it was written that you better go. The building of the base of which is very important, but you cannot desecrate the building of the of the of the build base of Hamikdash on Shabbos. And you would think you would be able to. Why? First of all, if you do it on Shabbos, it must be really holy. And B is that Shabbos is made for pleasure. There will be no greater pleasure than building the base of Hamikdash on Shabbos. Shabbos is all name, so if they should do it on Shabbos. Um, the Torah says no. They can't. You can't build, you can't build the base of Midrash on Shabbos. But in the base of Midrash, they could light the fires. The building goes, but the sacrifices that the Torah said that you're allowed to do, you're supposed to do, not allowed, supposed to do, like the Korban Atomi or the Korban of Shabbos, that you do, they light on Shabbos. They do the work. So that's an assessment, but otherwise not. So they uh, they were told to uh, build it, but then they told them that you know, why? Because Shabbos is very holy. Now we have a rule that there are certain things given to the Jewish people on a stipulation on a tonight, and certain things were given unconditionally. Beis Hamikdash, Beis Hamikdash, and there is Israel. Was giving honor tonight. Hold on a second. Was given honor tonight. What wasn't given honor tonight? Shabbos. Torah and Shabbos. There's no stipulation. At all times it's good. So, basically, based David and uh, Eretz Israel. That's why when we didn't keep the mitzvahs, we left Israel. We didn't keep the mitzvahs, we lost Beis Dovet. We didn't keep the mitzvahs and the marriage was from Beis Amin Mosh. And we said Beis Dovet. But Shabbos and Torah, was again, there was no time, no stipulation. Therefore, the Shabbos is stronger than uh, than the Beis Hamidrash in that sense. Now in Shabbos, you have this holiness. It's like a love. God on his own opened his heart and we, we loved the Jewish people and he gave him this place of rest. He gave him this beautiful moment. And he opens the door to anybody, any place, any time. Even, even if the person that you feel not spiritually clean, 
when you can hook into the Kedusha, the holiness and the purity of Shabbos, you get elevated. Same thing in Mitzvah. <clears throat> Even if you're not clean and dirty and you feel terrible by yourself and you're above and you're burdens on mom's hair, whatever may be terrible things, can a mom do a Mitzvah? Does he get holiness from the Mitzvah? Yeah. So you have a way that even the or murderer killed somebody, he still can do Mitzvah.